everything Chris everything Chris everything Chris everything 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 Chris everything Chris everything Chris everything everything Chris So talk us through your journey, you know, leading up to Northumbria. So, you know, uh, yeah, so you know. um, I, when I came back, so probably when I came back to Newcastle, I worked for one year for the Newcastle Eagles in, the, in their community program, which was really good. And I mean, I'm sure you know Mark Stewart, but I pretty much followed his, his footsteps. So he was there for a year. Then I took his job okay. and um, I did some work in the community. And it was real, really rewarding, really good. But it was, um, it gets monotonous, I suppose. Uh, you know, I'll be honest about that. It was working with years five and six. So for six weeks or so, when you're doing a bit of dribbling, passing, whatever it may be, you know, they, they want to be there. But ultimately, it was like a babysitting service. You know, it was a very deprived area, 10, 10 primary schools in the most deprived area of Newcastle. So, you know, it, it became more of a rec session or, you know, for parents, it was maybe a, a chance for them to have a bit more time to themselves. And it, it was it was tough because, you know, I, I start, it, I'll be honest as well, I started losing my love for, for coaching because it wasn't coaching like I was. I was happy that I was able to impact on some young people's lives, but um, but it really wasn't coaching. So I, I think the Eagles saw that and they said, oh, look, do you, th there was no teams available to coach because I came quite late to, I think I came in September. And they said, but do you want to start an under 13s or 14s um, like team with a, with a view to go into the under 13 National League next year? And, and that pretty much saved me, like all of those guys. So most of them, and this is how old I am now, but most of them have like graduated uni one or two years ago. Yeah. But they, like, it was such a group, like we we won the I mean, it's the 13s, right? But, you know, there hadn't been too much of a successful team, but we won the league, went undefeated. And, and like, it was my first taste of coaching and I loved it. Yeah. Uh, the kids were like little sponges, like working with that age group. So so that was really, really cool. And I did that again the following year. We split them into 13s and 14s because some of them had to move up. Some of them could stay down. But I look back on it and I'm sure some of them do as well. And like, I, you know, I, I knew how to make people fit because that was my job as a strength and conditioning coach. And I was good. I was a good skill coach at the time. I probably had zero basketball knowledge. I look back now and think, Christ, some of the stuff I would have said was horrific. <laughs> but like, it was, it was super fun. Um, Parents are always going to be parents and uh, football is way worse in this country, but some of the parents were tough to work with. Um, you know, they, they want their kids to play like all this sort of stuff. And I say, look, I'm trying to get them better. And, I, and now I've got a son. I'm like, I'm 100% not going to be that parent that goes, you need to play my son. But like, I, yeah, yeah. so that really, that really bothered me. So I thought, you know, what, I'm going to pat that on the head. And I got offered a job at Newcastle University to coach their women's team. Yeah, yeah. And that was super fun because then you only have the issues of dealing with players and like dealing with players is much easier than dealing with yeah. parents at times. Yeah. They're so, <laughs> so, so that was, so I went to Newcastle Union, had three really good years there. Um, but they then Deirdre, who was the coach and Josh, who was the coach in Northumbria, had been there for a long time. The opportunity came on board to get, to go to Northumbria and, it, uh, Newcastle Uni definitely didn't take it well like the my boss at the yeah. time but it was just the bigger opportunity they were playing in the, what was going to be the WBBL they had a much bigger recruitment budget at the time and it was a it was a solid program that you know Deirdre had built up for 20 years so it would so that was my dream job and then you know the rest is history we've, we've had some good years we've had some tough years with injuries and you know under uh, like myself underperforming and is uh, recruitment and all that sort of stuff but it's been so enjoyable like i would i would never change and i think i'm finally like going into this next year so i've had three solid years of getting like really good people involved like the the newcastle eagles took over two years ago and really pushed it in terms of branding awareness like we sit side by side by the men so you know, the, the sky was the limit for us and then COVID happened and, you know, things took a back seat. So, yeah. but, but all in there, it's going in the right direction for sure. Definitely. I've seen Newcastle doing great things. I like the fact that the men have tried to, they've incorporated the women's to it. So, you know, you know, it helps, like you said, it helps with the brand. I wish Leicester would do that as well. <laughs> that would be good as well if they did it more. Yeah, come on, Russ. If yeah. Russ is here, he needs to sort that out. Like, what a great guy Russ is, but he needs to sort that out for sure. <laughs> uh, so talking through that year of Northumbria, talk us through that whole that that WBBL year with Northumbria, man. How was that like? My, uh, like my North? first year. Yeah. Yeah, it it was good. Like I still look back at it. So like I keep in touch with most of the players. Well, nearly all the players. There's maybe a couple that you know you don't have the best relationships with, which is a shame because I pride myself. And anyone who knows me and anyone listening knows I'm a people person, and they probably think I know zero about basketball. But you know, it's getting there. Every year I I coach, I know I learn a little bit more. But uh, it was it was really good. I think, 
like some of my players who are still playing with me today are like, look, you were so much tougher then. Like we did so many running down the coast, down timeout, so many stairs that, you know, I didn't have to be a pretty, like a technically good coach. We, we were just fitter than pretty much most teams and took teams by surprise. For whatever reason, I've been pretty good at recruiting. Um, I had a few, I worked five-star camps with Matt Newby, uh, God bless him, at Leeds. And, uh, and you know, I had some connections and I said, look, I've just been given this job. We start in a month, any players that you know. And like, you know, they, they sent me two diamonds to be fair. So, so that really helped. And, uh, and then we had some very good British players at the time. So it, it was a, it was a whirlwind season. We were, we were fit. And I wish I'd like to go back to, I think we finished third. And I'd like to go back because if I had the knowledge I had now and every other team stayed the same, by the way, I think we'd do a lot better. Like, but it was a, it was a good season. And Mark Clark completely, I think that was the year he yeah. outcoached me 100% in the, um, in the playoff game. We finished third and they finished six. And like, he, they had like Sav, Abby Lowe, like they had a ton, Imani, they had a ton of great players. And, uh, and uh, he just, yeah, he absolutely uh, mind f me uh, pretty much, and I, I was, I was stumped with his, uh, with one of his zones that he threw out. So you know, since then, I realised I had a lot to yeah. learn. But it was, it was a good learning experience for sure. How many years was you at Northumbria? So I, I'm still there now, and I'm going into my eighth year. Um, so we linked the program. So like most of my WBBL players are doing their masters or undergraduate, and then they play for the Eagles as well. So when you was coaching the Northumbria team in the WBBL, how many years did you coach them? Um, so I think we got taken over like a year. Oh, I think we changed two seasons ago. So it would have been five years as Team Northumbria. And then we moved to, to Newcastle Eagles. But we played the first half of the season out of Northumbria because yeah. the arena wasn't built. And then we moved in in Christmas. Okay. So Northumbria's not... Oh, yeah. There's no uh, WBBL team in Northumbria no more. It's just... <laughs> no, that's right. So I still coach both. So like all of our training sessions, everything like that works at the uni just because yeah. most of the girls are there. And it's just easier for them. Like it's quite central. They can get into the arena whenever they want to shoot if they want to. It's about a 20 minute walk from the centre. So, yeah, it's decent. You had two decent players, too, that I very I know very well. Um, Nicolette and Tiani played, played for you, right? Oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, I would love to have them back. I mean, so Nick, I, like, we'll start with Nicolette. Nicolette was outstanding. Like, I, so I remember working with her at um, Five Star. Yeah. And I think she'd already been talking to Josh, who was the coach, who, who decided to leave for, for other options. And um, so I kept on those talks and we kept Nicolette or I was able to keep her for three years. I think by the third year, she was done with me in the whole city, in the whole system. But but I think like looking back, she will say that she had like a good time. And I, I absolutely love working with her. Like what a talent. And I think she is the future of GB. Like I don't see any other point guards coming through, unfortunately, at this moment in time. And she's got a unique skill set. She she really worked on her time here. She probably wasn't known for a shot initially, but then. You know, I gave her confidence 100%. I can't speak about her, like, foreign experience, but I know Lee's the same. Like, we'll give her a ton of confidence to shoot the ball, and she's shooting the ball so well. She's super tough. Like, you know, she's always going to get a steal a game, which is going to lead into a fast break late, normally at crunch time. Yeah. Uh, she's just a great person. And then T, my God, T, when we won everything, I had obviously T and D and, and, and Nicolette. We had, like, a, a loaded team, and I thought we were in a similar situation this year. Before it ended, we had some very good like personnel yeah. but they were they were great like T is probably one of the most knowledgeable players in the league and one just of the most like wittiest people just, I've ever met <laughs> oh yeah honestly like like su super nice like she would she had time for everyone I remember when I was doing like the SNC she would come in and train there like she'd work out with the kids at college who were in like the EBL or whatever it was at the time she would get you know pass on stuff to them and she's just she's just an all-around great person and mm -hmm. Unfortunately, or you know, fortunately for Len, who who's done very well for himself and absolutely loaded. If I win the Euro Millions, Tiani's one hundred percent coming back up to Newcastle for sure. But I need to try and win that Euro Millions because yeah, I would have a back. We'll try and win that, man. We will try and win that. <laughs> and, you had one, uh, and you had another player, Andrew mentioned Diana. Yeah, yeah, she she would. So like those two were great because. T would put her arm around everyone and say, oh, look, you know, like, hey, this is what you can do. And Diana would just flat out scream at you and tell you what you're doing bad, including myself, like tell you when to shut up and do whatever. But they, they complimented each other so, so well. And they both had hearts and goals and they were just driven. So, yeah. uh, you know, people like Tiani's probably the most successful women's basketball player in the WBBL. And even though she couldn't play in the final, we won. Like she was a massive part to it. Like just talking to me in my ear, like keeping me calm. Like she could see how like hyped up I would get at times. And I think I'm a lot calmer now, but you know, she, <laughs> she's like, she's just such a, a great teammate. She'll be a great coach if she wants to get into that. You know, she'll be yeah. great whatever she turns her hand to. So yeah, they're both, both great people. And we had some, like we had Nicolette on that team, Chloe, who's gone on to play some really good years in Germany. She won the DBBL last year. 
one of my current players, Mante, she she was in the final there. Uh, and so unfortunately lost to Chloe, but obviously happy for Chloe and sad for Mante, but hopefully gave her better things to come here. So, you know, we've had some really good players through the through the system who have gone to play professionally in about seven different countries now. That's good. That's good. I like that. So you've had some success in, in the helping them get there. So congrats to you as well. Talking about that playoff <laughs> final. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nicolette talk, spoke to us about that final and how intense it was. I believe in that final, Tiani was injured, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. So from your perspective as a coach, what was your whole mindset, your whole approach to that game? Because you was going against a dominant team at the time, was uh, not in the Wildcats. That's you, right, yeah. You were players and that. So what was the whole mindset? that like? you going into against a team that beat you by, I think, I don't know how many points in the season. 40. 40 yeah. in the season. That's, yeah, yeah. And then you see them in a player final and then Tiani's injured, like, what, uh, the whole, what was the whole emotions, the whole mindset, the whole game plan going into that game? Like, yeah, so even before, so it was crazy. I think that was my second year. So we were both undefeated teams in the league and it was November 8th because it was my 30th birthday <laughs> and we went down to play them and we got absolutely spanked by like 40, I think. And like, I, if it, if I'm thinking that oh, I could be, and no, I'm mixing my seasons up. But we did lose on my birthday anyway. But so like they, they had beat us pretty convincingly through the season. And then towards the end of the year, like our season's so long, like even though all those girls are fantastic and we had like good relationships, they all got on well with each other. You know, our, our mindset was, um, oh, we just got one more game. OK, we get through this game and then, you know, we won the semi, the core final pretty easily. And then we were like, OK, one more week. Like you only got to put up with us for one more week. We've got this next game against Sheffield and, like, you know, everyone played awesome, but T&D sealed the deal in the overtime by, like, you know, making a great decision, spread the floor. They went pick and roll. Tiani, just do whatever you see. So, you know, she was awesome with that. And then and then we had the final. And I was like, we had to do some things differently. And it's so harsh and hard to look back on it now, but we made a few tweaks and we said, like, what we were happy for people to beat us by if they did. Um, we, we worked on our press. We, we hadn't been clicking on all cylinders through the year. Like Abby, who was a big part of it, who got a few steals at the end of the game, our Swedish international, she, she came up big with some, with some stops and some deflections. And, and we, we, we pretty much, I remember we, we worked on our 2-3 zone from all the out-of-bounds plays. And then at the end of the game, when it was getting closer, they were expecting us to do that. I remember I would assume they would have done. And we like mixed it back up to man switch and everything. We got a couple of steals. So, you know, I like to think, I was pretty happy with how I coached, but like obviously players win games, like they were just ready for it. Um, you know, I think we were pretty relaxed going into it because we had nothing to lose. You know, I think we probably lost on average like 30 points throughout three games we played them. So, you know, fair play to to the players. Like they all hit big shots. I think we had five players in double figures and, you know, Nikki, you know, it was just, I remember speaking to Nick afterwards because, you know, every team goes through stuff. I don't care what people say. And like the last three weeks were a chore for all of us. We, You know, it was a long ass season. And, uh, and she came up and like said, oh, you did a great job. And I like, gave us a hug. And it's big for Nicolette because normally she'd rather just take the, take the piss, as you know, excuse my language. So, so no, she, it, was, oh, it was real nice to hear that from her. So, you know, it was, it was a real good, really good feeling, like a great, a great six-hour journey back for sure. Oh, man. So talk us through as well, you know, the emotions of winning that title, like against that team at the time, like. Yeah, like, well, honestly, like, I'd never, re I'd never been, I hadn't gone to London too much. I'd never been to the O2 before. So, like, the whole day I'm taking photos around the locker room, seeing who's been there and, like, you know, saying to the players, like, enjoy this. We were super relaxed, which which obviously helped them. And, um, and it, like, the whole, like, the crowd was great. I know it was the first year, so it was the first year with the O2. So, we went after the men. So, obviously, people leave, unfortunately, the nature of men's versus women's sport. There's still a lot of people that stay behind and, uh, and it was just great. At the time, we were still Team Northumbria. So, like, the director of sport at the time, like, Kate, like he flew down to see the game and, like, he was super excited for the girls and the program. And, uh, and like, it was just, it was great for everyone. Like, the only thing I look back on is I wish, you know, I really wish Tiani could have played in it. I mean, she's so influential. Like, we wouldn't have got there if it wasn't for her. But as a player, you know, I'd love her to be on court. But she, you know, everyone, it was just, it was so great. Like the, the champagne after my head was so sore on the way home. I was so drunk. The bus driver was so annoyed from uh, pulling over every like five minutes. Bless him. Like, but again, he was, I used to coach his son on the under 13 team. So, you know, it's a real like family affair up here. Like he worked for that company. He's like, I'd happily take you. And then the only downside was, I think we got back about 4 a.m. and I had to be in my main job for 8 a.m. the next day looking like crap. So that was, uh, that was fun. But yeah, it was the joys of the joys of coaching basketball in this country, right? Oh, no, tell me about it. So wait a minute. So you're saying your game was after the men's game? 
in the final. Yeah, it was the first year. Yeah, the first year. Yeah, and, and, I think it was because there was some event on. I don't know. Yeah, it's a bit. It's a bit annoying. Like people just came to watch the men and then leave for the women's. It's just like, like why can't we appreciate the women's game just as much as the men's game to a certain degree? Yeah, one hundred percent. It's so. I mean. You know, unfortunately, the world won't change, or hopefully it will, but it's going to take a long time. But, like, that, that game specifically, like, there were so many good players. Like, Amber Stokes, Christ, I, I think she had four minutes of, of rest in that game, if I remember rightly, if, and Dave Greenaway can definitely be told about this. But he rested her in the fourth quarter for, like, two, three minutes. And uh, I, don't, I can't remember who he put in, but, like, that definitely helped us. Like, she could have played 58 minutes. She was an unbelievable player. Like, I think she'd been in Europe ever since. So when she came out, I was like, happy days. Like, that takes the ball out of her. And she was unbelievable. Like, she did a bit of everything. No, amazing, amazing. Selling off. Everything, everything. Everything, Chris. Everything, Chris. Everything, Chris. Everything, everything, Chris.